What's up, people? In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a custom GitHub repository using GitHub Actions and GitHub Pages. But before we jump into the code, I think we should do a little bit of a demo so you can see where we're headed with this. Let's go ahead and turn over to the computer and we'll start there and then we'll jump right into it. So when we left off, we had just finished creating this Helm chart and we were able to install it locally in a Kubernetes cluster um, with just a simple Helm command. In today's video, we're going to take it one step further and we're going to automate the packaging of this Helm chart and push it up to a Helm chart repository. So here's the example Helm chart. And if you want to see how this chart was built or how this whole application was built, uh, we'll put a card at the top of the screen and link in the description below to the entire tutorial where you can learn how this is all done. You can see here that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be tagging this uh, this example repo with a version number and then pushing that tag. This will be version 1.1.1. Uh, here in the Helm chart uh, index.yaml file, you can see here that we do have 1.1.0, but not 1.1.1. So I'll go ahead and push this up. All right, that's completed. And then if we go look at the actions page on this uh, on this repo, you can see that it's kicked off the action on tag here. And this is going to go ahead and build the Docker container, and it will tag that Docker container as 1.1.1. It'll also package the Helm chart and version that version of the Helm chart to 1.1.1. So that way you can install the entire thing and make sure you're, you're using the exact same version number across the entire system. And getting this version control to work was a little more challenging than I initially expected. The out of the box GitHub action that you can use for pushing a Helm chart doesn't actually support this. So I'll get into that a little bit later, but I had to make some customizations to this and I'm going to submit that. And I'm going to submit that back to the project and see if they're willing to accept it as a change to make this a little bit easier for everyone moving forward. Okay, that's finished. So let's go ahead and switch back over. Now, if I refresh this index file, you'll see here that now we do have version 1.1.1 and you'll be able to install it that way. So let me go ahead and install this now. First thing we're going to do is run Helm repo update. So it pulls down those most recent changes that we just completed and then we'll run an upgrade. All right, and that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and jump into the code and I'll show you how we get this done. The first part of this video is going to start out with the chart releaser action that's actually released by Helm. As you can see in the readme there are four steps the first one we've already done and that is making sure that our chart is in a directory called charts so that's done check the second one is to create a branch called gh pages so we can push to this branch and that will be where the github pages html is stored and the chart.yaml file so pretty simply here we're just going to go ahead and create this branch and then push it up to the remote then we're going to go to the settings tab in GitHub and just make sure that all the GitHub pages stuff is set up, which it already is. The fourth step is to copy the example from just below, and we're going to go ahead and grab that and chuck it into the GitHub workflows release.yaml file. And that's going to be about where we stop by following the instructions in this repo. Because as you're about to see, and as past me learn the hard way, the GitHub action that's released by Helm itself uh, doesn't work well with tags. Uh, you're going to see here, I'm going to go ahead and tag this and push it up, and the whole thing is going to fall on its face. So two things happen here right off the bat. First off, Helm release goes green in four seconds, which immediately tells me that something's not right. Second, the Docker step goes red, and that, that one's easy to fix because I just deactivated the API key I was using earlier in the demo, so I'll reactivate that one. But now back to the Helm release. Looking here, you can see it says discovering changes since version one, nothing to do, no chart changes detected. And that's a little fishy, so I started digging a little bit more and realized this thing isn't built at all to work with tags. Um, it's really intended for pushing to mainline, and when you push to mainline, it'll just immediately start working. So uh, after about 10 minutes here of hunting around and looking through source code and trying to figure it out, I realized that something had to change. And through the wonderful magic of pre-recording and narrating over top, I'm going to skip everything that I did to fix this problem. I'll make another video about it. If you're interested in seeing it, then just subscribe to the channel, and it'll be the next one that comes out. It'll be a video about contributing to an open source project because that's what I did. So for right now, as far as this uh, walkthrough is concerned, if you're following along from the beginning and you've pasted in the example from the chart releaser page like I did earlier on, just go ahead and change the line for uses to my fork, which is typed out there on the screen. And then you can follow along with the rest of the video and just know that my fork actually supports the functionality that we're looking for. 
Um, obviously, I recommend that you take a look at the code change that I made, and I'll put a link in the description. You should always review any kind of open source change that you're pulling into your project to make sure that it is safe. Part of the change that I made was I introduced an additional variable here that is called skip packaging. So essentially, you put with and then skip packaging equals true on the next line down. And what that's going to do is make it so the chart releaser does not do the packaging step. And then we're gonna go just above and we are going to create a custom packaging step, which allows this to get packaged on tag and used the, and use the tag that we've created. For the next step, I'm just grabbing a few lines from the original CR.SH, which is in the chart releaser package and dropping those in. What this does is it clears out the .CR release packages directory, which is essentially the artifacts directory that is that where all the information is stored. So we're gonna remove the CR release packages and then we're gonna create fresh that directory. Next, we're going to use the helm package command to package our helm chart and apply the app version and the version flags. Uh, these two flags will be populated in just a second here with the actual version numbers of the tag that we create when we push it up. And the final flag here is the destination flag, which will tell the system to, after it packages, put it into that .CR release packages directory that we just created above. The next part is getting the actual tag. Uh, I struggled with this a little bit here, but essentially when you push the tag up, uh, GitHub Actions should be able to get that tag from a environment variable. And then we're gonna use that in the app version and the version flags in the Helm package command. GitHub provides the GitHub ref name uh, variable that you can use in your actions, and that's what we're going to use here. And then I'm going to go ahead and populate that version minus the first character, because the first character of the version is the letter V, and Helm does not need the letter V out front, so it's going to be strictly the version number that gets applied here. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and push these changes up, and then we're going to apply a tag here just to try it out, and then push that tag up to the remote, and go ahead and switch over to GitHub Actions and take a look at the action running and make sure everything works correctly. And that is exactly what we were looking for. This ran through the entire thing. It applied the tag to the Helm chart, and finally, it's still working on the Docker step, but we'll push the Docker container up using the same exact version and then move everything to the GH pages branch which houses all of the GitHub pages information including the index.yaml which is what's needed for pulling down a Helm chart from a Helm chart repository. So here's the index.yaml in GitHub and you can see here that the version applied and it shows up here in the file. And if I actually go to the pages that GitHub pages generated and I go to index.yaml, you'll see that the index prints out here as well. All right, now just to prove that this thing works, I'm gonna go ahead and make a change to the application itself in the YouTube handler. And we're just gonna add some junk data here to the REST API response that we created earlier. All right, now we'll save those changes and we'll go ahead and push these changes up to mainline. And now we're gonna go ahead and uh, add a new tag and then push that tag. If you've been following along in this tutorial, we created a custom values.yaml file, which is uh, not stored in this repo. It's where you keep your secrets and things. Make sure that you go and remove the one line about pinning the tag of the container to latest. Uh, that will make, all, make sure all of this works. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the GitHub Actions uh, tab here. And we'll see that this is building our new tag, version 1.1.0. Our custom packaging step that we built earlier successfully packaged the chart. All right, both steps are complete, so it should be ready to go. Now we'll update the Helm repo. So locally on my machine here, it pulls down the most recent version of that index.yaml file, and then we'll run the Helm upgrade command. All right, the upgrade is complete. Now if we go ahead and take a look at the Kubernetes cluster, you can see that it terminated the previous version and installed the new version of the app. Then we can go ahead and open up the browser and hit refresh and see that our change to the API has appeared. And there it is. All right, I'll go ahead and leave it there. See you all in the next one.